chapter number 17, and if you have a Bible, you can turn there. I'm not going to start out reading a text because actually it's the whole chapter, verses 1 through 58. That would be a quite a lengthy reading. We will cover portions of this as I preach the word of the Lord tonight. I want to bring to you seven points. Now, I'm not going to be a lengthy time preaching, uh, just uh, short in each one of them, okay? But we will read before each of those seven sections. Amen. How many are well aware of Christians that when you gave your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, there was also an enemy that you gained? <laughs> and who is the enemy? None other than the devil. I'm not here to magnify the work of the devil or anything tonight. I don't like him, <laughs> so I don't need to give uh, much attention to him. I believe we need to focus our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done. And now he said, victory over the wicked one. And many may have felt like they've been under attack of the enemy. There is such a thing as a spiritual attack of the enemy. And if you don't know what that is, you haven't lived long enough. You will know at least one time or more throughout your life when the enemy comes against you with all forces spiritually. I also believe the enemy can come against us physical attacks. And if this isn't what we are experiencing as a church right now, I don't know what is. It seems like there's a lot of sickness and the Lord has put within this church the gifts of healing. And we need to focus upon that and pray as much as we know how to pray. Seek the face of God and fast and overcome the physical attacks of the enemy upon our saints. Amen. Uh, sickness, the Lord paid for at Calvary. Amen. It's the, paid for in as much as the blood that flowed from his side and paid for our salvation. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, it said the spirit of the Lord would raise up a standard against him. And I want to raise up a standard against the enemy when it comes to physical sickness. I told Sister Barb before the church and stood here, or started tonight in worship, I said, you know, I want to come back from vacation or whatever you call that, a couple of days away, and then heard of all these things that are happening. I said, man, it hits you, and it hits you hard. But as pastor, I can't get down because uh, if I did, you folks would do too. Help us to keep our head above water and, and just uh, and go to uh, whatever length it needs to be to come against all the attack of the enemy. Spiritually, physically, he'll also attack emotionally. Yes, he will. The enemy wants to do a number on you. And not only emotionally, even mentally. And on that, my mind goes to uh, Brother Don Kirstead and for over a year now, uh, he's had an enemy attack his mind, and, and you ask him how he is, uh, you really don't need to do that unless you want an earful. And he, it's always negative and down, and that's not down. <laughs> and what it is, that's an oppression from an enemy that has attacked his mind. There is such a thing as an attack of the enemy on your mind. I'll tell you what, we need to rebuke the forces of the enemy and promote the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and when the Lord said that he gave us an helmet of salvation, what for? <laughs> that we may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Lord, help us to keep the helmet on and protect our mind from onslaughts of uh, things that the enemy will tell us that is not right. And how many would confess during their uh, journey that they've had the enemy tell them things that it took them a while to find out, but it was false? <laughs> You know, sometimes things are not always as they appear, but the enemy, he would just love to make you think all kind of false things about yourself, about your walk with God, about the church, about uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. The enemy is an all-out uh, war. Why is this happening with such intensity? I'm telling you, we are in the last days. We are in the end time. The scripture tells us Satan knows he has but a short time. And because of this short time, he's working fiercely. And he's working overtime, uh, knowing that he only has a short time. It would almost seem like he's being effective, but I can't give him that much glory, all right? We serve a God that's greater. The enemy, what greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, was the song that we sang this evening. And never has there been a time of so much sickness, so much death, 
so much fear, so much confusion and uncertainty, so much disaster and catastrophe. It's all a sign that the end is about to wrap up, and we need to understand where we are spiritually. So tonight, if I could read from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, as I go on here, I want to bring us some comfort concerning all of the clamor. We have the privilege of going to Jesus 24-7. And you know something? As a child of God, you can triumph over enemy attack, over every attack of the enemy. You can triumph over all the odds. First of all, you must master fear. That seems the thing that the enemy really tries to put upon us, intimidate us with, is fear. And that's one of the signs of the end time. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Heart attacks like crazy. Why? The enemy working overtime, trying to put a spirit of fear on us. And God, in his word, 1 Timothy 1, 7, The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'll take the way of Jesus. How about you? Amen. We cannot let the enemy intimidate us by instilling fear in our hearts. So tonight I want to inspire you and to encourage you and build up your faith against all odds. Overcome fear just like David did. Now David was a small, uh, young youth. He was a boy and there was an enemy that came against him. You know that the big dude, his name was Goliath. And man, did he try to ever intimidate David. But David didn't back up again a bit. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't scared. He wasn't fearful of that uh, big, ugly dude, <laughs> right? And, and all that he did to come against him. And so somehow we can just have muster the faith that David had and come against all the fiery darts of the wicked one. When I was uh, out to camp this week, I was reading much of the scripture, uh, some Folks that are out there, like, they like to go to bed early, and I'm not an early go-to-bed guy. And so I get my Bible out, and I read much scripture, and I come to 1 Samuel and clear up to verse, or chapter number 17. And, and it seemed like the Lord impressed upon me that chapter. This is what I need to minister on on Sunday to help to encourage the saints of God. So I begin to meditate upon it, come home, research it a little bit more, and I feel that it will minister here this evening. You've heard the saying, when all else fails, ask grandma. No. Before all else fails, we need to take it to Jesus in prayer. <laughs> all right, it's Jesus that we need. Seven portions here of Scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 17. First of all, I want to contrast the difference between that young lad, David, and that great big giant, <laughs> Goliath. Now the, I call him the daredevil dude. He presented himself to the Israelites on a daily basis, and he was daring any one of them to come out and fight against him. He said, uh, if I kill you, I'll feed your flesh to the birds of the air. If you kill me, then the Philistines can be your servants. He wasn't afraid to come out and stand and defy the armies of the living God, and he did it on a daily basis. And when he came out with that tall, uh, heavy armor and thundering voice, uh, to, to the Israelites, they, they were terrified to death of that enemy in all Israel. Even King Saul was afraid of him, and King Saul was head and shoulders above every man in his kingdom. The daily routine of the giant to instill fear so that his uh, subjects would be easy prey. I was reminded of the picture of a, a lion in the woods. You know, a lion, he's the king of the forest, and... and and what he does, uh, he, he, he acts like a bully. He's not fair at all. He'll see a little tiny mouse, and he will roar so loud in the whole forest over a tiny mouse. And the vibrations of that roar will, will paralyze that mouse, and then all he comes up is eats it, puts it in his mouth, and goes away. That's so unfair, isn't it? Such a big thing and coming against a small thing with overkill. <laughs> That's just how merciless the enemy is. You can't trust the enemy, all right? So by contrast, humanly speaking, there was a very great contrast between Goliath 
and David. Let me read it to you in 1 Samuel 17, verses 4 through 7. Big contrast between small David and big Goliath. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had an helmet of brass upon his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. One bearing a shield went before him. I'll tell you, he's a big dude. He's armed heavy. (laughs) I couldn't even carry his spear. And he's got someone else carrying his shield. Wow, it's just almost like, oh, he's a big lad. Meanwhile, we find out that in 1 Samuel 17, verses 41 through 44, he's still making some threats here. The Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the men that bear the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and of a fair countenance. The Philistines said unto David, now here's the contrast, he said, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Should be one more verse there, isn't there? Yeah. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, I'll give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Man, this great big dude, he's quite a bully, isn't he? He's got much to say. He's got a loud voice. He's got heavy armor. He's tall. He's big. He's ugly. David's just a small youth and not much on his sight. The comparison is just uh, unreal or, or too far apart. He's trying to intimidate and instill fear into David so that he would be easy prey. So he had, Goliath had great physical strength. He was trained in the, as a warrior to be powerful and had lots of armor, whereas Dave, or Dave, he was just a youth, a shepherd boy, never been in battle before. It seemed like it was a total mismatch to come together to fight. There was not a chance in this world that David could defeat Goliath. No one believed that David could or that he would except David himself, who didn't have any fear. (laughs) Wow. Amen. David didn't have any fear. That's awesome, all right? There's times in our life when we face these challenges that are so big and overwhelming, and they feel that we're no match for them. But if we could be inspired by David's victory over Goliath, then we could have confidence and remember that the greater the battle, the more sweet the victory. Amen. And so that was the contrast. What about the second portion, the courage? David had absolutely no fear. Uh, When everybody else was afraid of Goliath, David wasn't afraid at all. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 8 through 11. He stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye the servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to kill with be able to fight with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. The Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man. This is how he instills fear. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. All Israel, dismayed and greatly afraid over the words of that big dude. Give me a man. Let's fight together. I'll feed you your flesh to the animals. Man, it put fear in them, didn't it? Then we go to 1 Samuel 17, 23 and 24. Uh, 
And as he talked with them, behold, there come up the champion of the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. What was the them he heard? The words. Give me a man. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and they were sore afraid. But not David. David's courage was amazing when he faced Goliath, the entire Israelite army, even their king Saul, were terrified of Goliath. David was surrounded by fearful people, but he stood out in total fearlessness. Nothing could make him afraid. He knew his God. Goliath's appearance, head and shoulders and even taller, six cubits in the span than any man. His strength, his armor, his experience, his threats, nothing could make David afraid. Now, how does that relate to us? If we could be bold and fearless in the face of our battles and our challenges, then we could defeat Goliath or the enemy as well. Just got to overcome our fear. He was absolutely fear, fearless, and we need to face our challenges without fear in order to get victory over them. Amen. That brings me to the third part here. David, having no fear, he became very confident in his God. He had total confidence that he could defeat Goliath with the help of God. Amen. All Israelite army, Saul had the whole army. The army had Saul. They had one another. David had nobody except God. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. One with God is a majority. One with God is a winner. 1 Samuel 17, verse 25 through 27. Notice the confidence that David has here. Now the Israelites had been saying, and the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him The king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter, make his father's house free in Israel. This is an offer from the king to the one that would defeat the enemy. David heard that. 27. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done unto the man that killeth him. David was interested in the reward. He was that confident. He asked them to repeat it again. What was to be done to the man that kills this Philistine? And again, he's not fearing. He knows he can beat him. And so uh, there's a reward being offered. He said, uh, I want you to give that to me again. Notice here, it was the second time verbally. He should have said, just put it in writing. (laughs) That's what it would be today, wouldn't it, huh? But he confirms it, the second that what reward is going to be given to the one that overcomes this guy? He was very confident that he could overcome him. We should be strong in faith just like David was. No doubt, no unbelief is going to rob us of our victory. Amen. Any challenges should be seen as a blessing in disguise. We can overcome. Leads me to the fourth section, the comments. David did not allow the negative comments even of his brother or of King Saul to discourage him. Look at 1 Samuel 17 and 28. Eliab, the oldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left the few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Here's his older brother coming against him now. It's one thing to have the enemy against you. It's another thing to have your older brother or sister (laughs) to condemn you concerning the enemy. He said, you should have stayed home. You had a responsibility back home looking after the sheep. You've got so much pride. You think you're going to do something here? He accused him of pride and of wickedness. 
tell you what, it's enough when the enemy discourages, let alone a brother or sister try to discourage you. Both try to discourage David, and then King Saul tries to discourage him. In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 33, Saul, what did he say? Saul said to David, you're not able to go up against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. He's a man of war from his youth. Contrast, too big. You don't stand a chance. There's always naysayers. I said there'd always be naysayers, but you got to know God for yourself. David didn't allow the people. He didn't allow his brother. He didn't allow Saul. He didn't allow the champion to discourage him by their negative comments. He knew his God. He wasn't afraid, and he was confident that he could have victory over this enemy, so nothing that they could say was going to deter him. Sometimes in our lives, we allow other people to rob us of blessings because they instill within us unbelief, jealousy, negative words. And we buy into it. Oh, Lord, where's that helmet? Amen. Not in the helmet of salvation to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. I find when I put a helmet on to ride my motorbike, if people are going to say something to me, they need to, to holler. Because there's a barrier between me and them. Oh, Lord, we need a helmet on a saints once in a while so we can't hear what the brothers and sisters are saying. If it's negative. Amen. And he didn't want to be deterred. He just faced Goliath without any uh, encouragement of the people. He faced the giant alone, but he wasn't alone. God was with him. He had proved his God at least twice before, and we're going to get into that here in just a few moments, okay? When you know God is God and he works on your behalf, you have a confidence in God. And so David makes a confession. This is the fifth part that I want to bring to you. Every word that David spoke when he faced the giant was a positive confession of certain victory. He didn't say, if I kill you. He was quite confident he's going to bring him down, right? And, and so every word of David uh, was towards him getting the victory. First Samuel 17, 34 through 37. Look at David here. First to King Saul, David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after him and smote him and delivered him out of the mouth. And when he, when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. The servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Notice that, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. What David was saying here, I'm just an instrument, he can use me. It's not my battle. Hello? <laughs> I'm just a vessel, he can use me. And so he's going to come up against this enemy. Thy servant slew it. And because uh, he was going to defy the armies of the living God. That verse, 30, verse 37. David said, moreover. Wow, I like this, don't you? Moreover. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with thee. Saul's not trying to discourage them this time. He just says, you go and God help you. Right? Someone said like this, uh, uh, Lord, if you don't help me, please don't help that bear. <laughs> All right? But anyway, he's, uh, he was delivered out of the hand of the lion, out of the, the paw of the bear, and he said, this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be just like one of them. Not a word of hesitation. Not a word of doubt. Not a word of unbelief. He's confident that God will come through again. I like that about David, don't you? He might be small, might be only youth. He hasn't lived long enough to get all them doubts and, and let the words of brothers and sisters and discouragement all come in. He trusts God. So David confessed before the people, before Saul, 
uh, the faithfulness of God in two previous situations. And he remembers that when he faced those battles, God gave him the victory. It inspired more faith within him that the Lord was going to come through again. Not one word of unbelief. He's very confident. So then came the contest. The sixth part of my message tonight. David had a revelation that this contest between he and Goliath really wasn't between he and Goliath. It was between Goliath and God. Wow. It was a contest between Goliath and God. 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 through 47. David said to the Philistine, he said, then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. He names three of the armor. If you look back at the first of the chapter, he was armed with a whole lot more than that. There was things around his legs and his breast, but he names these three anyway. If that's all you've got on, I know you got a whole lot more, but he said, but I come to you with just one thing. I come to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> in the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is powerful. <laughs> you have the name of the Lord, and you need to use it. Amen. Praise God. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Plus, it's the one whom you have defied. <clears throat> name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, and whom thou hast defied. I'm letting you know, enemy, <laughs> this is not just my battle and a little youth that you're looking at. You're missing the whole thing here. You're only seeing the physical side. You know nothing about the spiritual side. What's the spiritual side? One with God's majority. Amen. Amen. And so the contest in chapter 17, verses 45 through 47, uh, we just, uh, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. Again, not one word of doubt or unbelief. David knows his God who delivered him twice before from certain death, from a lion and a bear. And he said, uh, a human being or a giant, whoever he is, not as powerful as a lion and bear. He's going to be just like one of them. 1 Samuel 17, verse 38 through 40. Notice what it says here. <laughs> Saul uh, saw that he wasn't going to deter this young man by his negative words, so... Saul said to David, I want you to take my armor, put this helmet of brass upon your head, and he armed him with a coat of mail. David girded his sword upon his armor, and he assayed. Now, this is the first hesitation we find in David. He said he assayed, or he hesitated. He didn't want to go. What happened here? For he had not proved it, the it referring to Saul's armor. It was way too big and clumsy. You see, Saul's head and shoulders over every man. David's but a small youth. Man, that's going to be awful clumsy armor to try to even wear. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not proved them. And so David put Saul's physical armor aside. Amen. And he took his staff in hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. <laughs> if you can just see the contrast here again. Here's the great big bully, the giant on one field. field. He's got that heavy spear and, and the shield in front of him, another armor bearer, just, just armed to no end. And here's a little kid coming to him with just slings. not a bit of armor it's not a fair battle folks anybody with a human brain knows what's going to happen that's if you're looking at it humanly amen and sometimes we look at our battles that way we take them into our own possession instead of turning them over to Jesus did you ever hear tell that song turn it over to Jesus and you'll smile the rest of the day and so that's what you do first thing in the morning. You turn it over to Jesus an hour later, go pick it back up. <laughs> no, you need to leave it in his hands. <laughs> All right, and then you can smile the rest of the day. 
So he hadn't proved these, and so he went to the brook and got some stones and the sling that he had proved. I said that he had proved. Now, uh, I would just prefer to have a 3 out 3 myself. I've got one of those slingshots at home where you put a stone in. And you can get quite a big stone, but, you know, you're pulling. Let that thing go. You're lucky to hit a fly. They're not accurate at all. Did you get that? A sling is not accurate at all. As many times as you use it, you're not going to hit the same spot twice. It's like throwing darts. Anyone like to, to throw darts? I guarantee if you hit the bullseye this time, you won't next time. You're just not that good. David fixed five stones, but you see, he knew when that lion that was greater than he and that bear that was greater than he came out, he did not defeat those in his own strength. And he said, this uncircumcised stone, all I've got is five stone, smooth stones and a sling, and I'm going to come against it. Lord, he defied you. It's not me. I'm just small. But Lord, you can do it again. And see, so it's up to the Lord to direct the shot. <laughs> this is not me. It's the Lord. Amen. It's not me and Goliath. It's the Lord and Goliath. And so... He comes up against it. He didn't slack back. When that Philistine drew near, notice what David did. He ran towards the Philistine. Now, if it hadn't been his brothers out in the field there, when the Philistine roared, you know what they did? They run and hid. And here's David not running and hiding. He's running toward. He said, might as well deal with this sooner or later. And it might as well be now. Not one word of unbelief, not one word of doubt. He knew God would come through for him again. It was The confidence wasn't in himself. It was in the God that he served. It was God that delivered me out of the lion and of the bear. And he will this Philistine. And so he ran towards the champion. Number seven, David come out to the champion after defeating Goliath. And he proved his faith by his actions. What was his actions? Running toward and not away. 1 Samuel 17, verse 48 through 53. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in the bag, took thence a stone and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, smote the Philistine, slew him, and there was no sword in David's hand. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, took that Philistine sword, drew it out of the sheath, slew him, cut off his head, and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. The Lord gave David the victory. One more verse there. The men of Israel and the men of Judah shouted and pursued after the Philistines until they had came to the valley and to the gates of Ekron and, uh, wounded, and the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way of, can't pronounce that, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. What had happened was David's victory with the Lord rubbed off or or gave the rest of the Israelites courage? Where were the rest of the Israelites when David was back home keeping sheep? They were still in the barracks with their heads down, confessing one to another, we've got no power against this enemy. Uh, uh, let's discourage one another by all of our unbelief and faith. And they spread the word around. And, man, they were in bad shape. But all it took was one to gain the victory, and it encouraged them, inspired their faith, and they run after the Philistines and destroyed them. Thank God for one that will stand up and get the victory. Amen. If one gets the victory, there will be others besides you get victory too. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So that was the, the challenge there. The champion. Who was the champion? It wasn't Goliath. The champion 
was Jesus. Amen. David prevailed against the Philistine because he was confident in his God. He worshiped his God. He knew his God. He gave God all the credit. Folks, all I've got to say for us tonight, if the enemy is attacking, whether it's physically, spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, we need to rise up. Need not to fear, need not to discourage one another by faith and unbelief, but rather say, this battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. <laughs> Be fearless, <laughs> go to the word of God, <laughs> pick up five stones, J-E-S-U-S, -S, the name of Jesus, <laughs> All right, the name of the Lord is what brought the victory. That's what the champion of the enemy camp was defined, was the Lord God of Israel. But come to the enemy with the name of the Lord Jesus. Defeat the enemy. And then you know what you can do? You can use the enemy's own weapons against him. Take his sword, take his shield, take his armor or whatever, cut the head off the enemy, take the... Uh, the armor back and have something to rejoice over. Here's what the Lord did. Amen. We can come through to victory if we can overcome fear and stay true to Jesus and come in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's stand tonight.